when people I hear this a lot of times when people tell me that oh I like to get tattoo but I don't know what to get if you don't know what to get don't get right Hi, I'm uh, Jeremy from uh, Monkey Tattoo Studios, Kuching, Sarawak and I do tattoos for at least like, uh, I guess like 14 to 15 years now. Most of my tattoos are inspired by uh, Sarawak designs, Sarawak motif, which is the Borneo tattoos, the Orang Ulu which consists of the Kayan, Kenya, Klabit, and all of uh, the penan, the punan. I'm not only inspired by the tattoos they wear, I mean the different tribes, also murals and uh, carvings and also uh, fabric designs. And I kind of combine all that and make a nice tattoo or what, whatever comes into my head. I don't really choose to do that kind of style. So, let me take you back maybe like 20 over years ago. I used to live with my grandfather who sells uh, guns. Most of his uh, clients are from uh, the rural area, you know, all, all the tribes that come buy guns from him and they, they, they used to come in with a lot of uh, tattoos on them. And uh, the first time I saw that and like, okay, you know what? I want to be just like that, you know? <laughs> Growing up, I see people with tattoos, long earrings with a lot of tattoos buying buying guns, buying bullets, with, with a machete. So pretty much it's influenced by all these designs. Just five minutes from where I stay, it's a Sarawak museum. So I spend most of my uh, evenings going to the Sarawak museum, looking at this design. So pretty much this thing fall into my, my life, you know. Most of my tattoos are like collections, okay? from collections from around the world. Where should I start? Okay, maybe I start here, okay? This is a Thai traditional tattoo. It's also known as Sakyan. It's done by one of my uh, friends from Thailand. So for me, all the tattoos that I have is a kind of a memory or a collection of all my friends, my journey, in, uh, my traveling. And this is from Austria and Sweden, Holland, England and this is from Tahiti and this is done by the traditional tool which is the traditional Samoan hand tap and this is done with the traditional yeah, Tahiti tattoo and here a Samoan traditional tattoo and you know most of the tattoos are done with their own specific tattoo styles. This it's done by my friend uh, Fab from uh, Germany. He's really good in uh, like abstract art. So I was tattooing in Germany back in seven, probably eight years ago. And you know, I just say, hey, tattoo Sarawak on me. That's it. That's the whole story. Very short. And I think that goes for most of my tattoos, you know. I don't think too much. I just say, okay, you know what? I like this work. I do it. Oh yeah, this? It's the kaki punching tattoo. This was done in a mini tattoo convention. I think it's me, my friends, tattoo organizers, some good friends, some good artists. We just gathered up in a tattoo convention and say, you know what? We make a design and we tattoo each other with it. What the heck of it? Just, just do it. So I say, okay, you know, well, what do you want to do? This guy, he based this design on the fissure of men, you know? So it was from that inspiration that this tattoo was a, was a hook, like fishing hook. Also, it, it's a shape of a, like a, a pirate hook on the hand, Captain Hook. So, okay, a pirate and the fisher of men. And we gather everybody and we tattoo each other with that. So it's like a friendship tattoo. He will draw and the other guy will tattoo the first line and the other guy will tattoo the other line and the other guy will tattoo the other line. So. It goes in a round, so after mine is done, I'm gonna tattoo him. Of course, we change needle. It's like a ritual, you know, like a friendship ritual. You will always remember where and who tattooed you at that time. We are all living in a living in a moment.
Well, like I said earlier, no? Uh, order, please. Okay, like I said earlier, um, when I was younger, I, I used to live with my grandfather that uh, he sells guns for hunters. Most of his customers are people with tattoos. The first time I was uh, inspired by tattoos is this guy when I was sitting there, I think I was like uh, seven. I see this guy come in the shop and this guy have hair like this. He's got earrings, big earrings. He's got throat tattoos. He's got a machete in his... So he walk in and say, I want some bullets. Yeah, that and my grip. Okay, you go get some hunting bullets for him. But I was sitting there in the counter, I was looking at him. Wow, man. Damn. These tattoos are mean. When I grow up, I want to be just like that guy. The guy left and I asked my granddad, I say, Hey, what is that thing, you know? That, that, oh, that's called tattoo. Oh yeah, I, I want to get one now, you know? I want to I want to fill my body up with the tattoos. And he said, no, you know, my grandfather said, no. I don't think you can uh, take the pain. I said, oh yeah? Let's just see about that. I was inspired by this guy called Tusau Padan. You know, it's, I think it's uh, Oran Ulu or Kayan, I think. When I was young, I was drawing these designs already. I was kind of copying his designs. And then one day, my dad, you know, he, he came back and said, Hey, you like tattoos? The book, and there's a lot of guys with tattoos in it. And when I turned the pages, I saw all the guys, especially there were pictures of a lot of Iban guys and a lot of uh, Kayan women with tattoos. So I flipped the page and I saw one guy. He was sitting down cross-legged with a cigarette in his mouth. And his name was uh, Penghulu Lagan. You know, I remember all this. This guy was cool, he got all the Bunyatrong, all the Iban tattoos on him. I, I started copying his designs, you know. I think 2009, I have a friend, so Iban friend say, Oh, you know what, next week we're gonna go, go to the longhouse or whatever, you know. Okay, I say, Oh, you know what, i come with you. That time I, I was already tattooing, but I was uh, tattooing a lot of things and everything. Iban tattoo and everything, I didn't know anything about it. We went to this long house, it was uh, three hours from the tongue or something like that with the long board. We went there. We went there and then he introduced me to all the, all the guys, you know. And then I noticed this guy, this old man. I noticed his tattoo. I was drawing his tattoo since I was like nine years old. I, I know this guy. I said, oh, I know this guy. Then he said, oh, this is Muluka. No way, you know. I met him just like that. And I just shook hand and he talked to me and I talked to him and I talked, you know, we just clicked and we say, we talk all day. For me, it's like meeting a superstar, you know. So that is when I really get serious in uh, Iban tattooing, you know, especially Iban tattooing because he, he taught me a lot about how the thing was placed and why it was placed like this and all the designs and everything like that. Tattoos or anything else, it's up to you, you know. If you like it, then you do it. If you do not like it and you do it only for the money, it's like everything else, don't do it. That's it. Easy. Don't force yourself to do things you don't want to do, you know. Art is art. Yeah, like everything else. When people, I hear this a lot of times, when people tell me that, oh, I like to get tattoo, but I don't know what to get. If you don't know what to get, don't get. Right? That's it. So that is my own advice for these kind of people, you know. <laughs> it's like, it's like, <laughs> I'm hungry, but I don't know what to eat, you know. Number two, sometimes people want to get tattoo and they find a meaning to get tattoo. You really don't have to. You really don't have to find a specific meaning to get tattoo. If you feel like you want to get tattoo, get it done. If you feel like that design is super cool, get it done. If you think that, oh, this is nice, but my friends say, oh, not very nice. Who cares, you know, it's on your body, not him or her. Never get advice from your friend that, oh, maybe it should be bigger, maybe it should be smaller. You want to get tattoo, think about it yourself. You like it, you do it. If you have a meaning for yourself, okay, good. But if you don't have a meaning, you don't have to force yourself to have a meaning. You don't need other, uh, other people's opinion. Unless you're under 18, then you have to tell your parents. That's it. 
Anyway, thanks for watching and don't forget to share, like and subscribe to I Love Borneo. It's a wrap.